you wouldn't call me at home. Liz hasn't turned up. You're kidding. You haven't let anything slip, have you? About us? Of course not. I think she may suspect something. What makes you say that? Her attitude. I bumped into her this morning and she was really weird. So what's new? How is she at home? Same as usual. For Christ's sake, my, my hand's falling asleep. Is someone with you? It's the TV. Look, if you want to pull out, now's the time to say. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I don't. Good. Because as far as I'm concerned, the sooner I'm out of this, the better. It's probably just my imagination, but I thought I'd warn you just in case. Shit, I gotta go. Quick, Liz is home. Uh-huh. I'm not fucking joking. Oh, my God, you sent you to take a look. She's supposed to be. Fucking woman. Honey, it's not funny. Please, 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 please. Baby, not them. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Help me out here, please. All right, get downstairs. Get downstairs. Honey, get downstairs. <laughs> your scarf! <laughs> hey, Liz! What are you doing here? I live here, Mike, remember? Hi, Liz! Well, if it isn't little Susie Thompson from next door. Again? Aren't you supposed to be at the clinic? Fuck the clinic. Been skipping lectures to shag my husband's suit. Don't be ridiculous, Liz. Mind you, he did just have me handcuffed to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mike. Finally found a girl after your own heart. Yeah, right. If you'd only been a couple of more minutes. It all been over knowing you, dear. I'm surprised you remember that far back. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. I just came by to wish Mike luck for tonight. Oh, the awards. Well, you need to bother, so. You see, to win even a daytime Emmy, one needs something about one that's outstanding. Wit, charm, charisma, sex appeal. <laughs> so true. I wonder why they've nominated me the last four years. To make up the numbers. I mean, really, sir, you've seen Caught in the Act. Why else would they nominate him? Possibly because he's a household name. So is Charmin, dear, and they weren't. Even though they deal in the same commodity. 
Personally, I don't think crap like caught in the act should be broadcast without a public health warning. And Liz should know, after all, she's hosted two of this country's most popular game shows. Haven't you, honey? Oh no, that's me. <laughs> you don't have to be a sewerage worker, Mike, to recognize crap. Or talk it. It's pure owl drivel. Don't you agree, Sue? No, not really. Oh. So how would you describe a show that catches unsuspecting members of the public on closed circuit TV getting their rocks off? Intellectually stimulating? Well, I'm sure it never set out to be 60 minutes. <laughs> Such powers of observation from one so young. Could you try and be a little more condescending, Liz? I have a real problem with subtlety. Ooh, something between the ears as well as the legs. Now that has to be a first for you, Mike. Don't put yourself down, honey. You know what Dr. Campbell said about self-esteem? Hello? It's for you. Hello? 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 They hung up. That's the fourth time this week. What is? Our silent friends call. Probably a wrong number. Four times in a week? Is there something I should know? Liz, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, of course you don't. I'm being paranoid as usual. Did I say that? Did I? That's what you're insinuating. Oh, for Christ. What do you think, Sue? If every time you answered the phone, someone hung up, wouldn't you find that just a teensy-weensy bit suspicious? Oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry, Liz. This has nothing to do with me. Thanks for the drink, Mike. Don't go, Sue. Have a drink. We'll try and figure out the identity of my secret admirer. Bye, Liz. I'll see you out. Maybe it's that old slut, Mary Chambers. She's got to be a front runner. Or how about senile Wendy from the golf club? Oh, I don't know how you put up with her. Well, hopefully it won't be for much longer. Just tell her, Mike. Honey. I will. Let me get the Emmys out of the way, and then I'll... Oh, my God, I'm horny, aren't you? <laughs> Need you ask? Ooh! <laughs> well, good luck tonight. I'll be keeping everything crossed. <laughs> oh, and you will talk to the Zimmermans about my idea, right? Yeah, of course I will. You promise? If I win tonight, I'll have the producers eating out of my hand. Mm. <laughs> we work well together, don't we? When we get the chance. <laughs> All right, I'll call you later. Congratulations! You just made a complete asshole out of yourself. I mean, what's the point of getting therapy for your drink problem if instead of going to the clinic, you go out and get smashed? Kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? I hardly call one drink getting smashed. One? Since when are they serving vodka by the bucket? So I had a couple, big deal. Why tonight, huh? Why tonight of all nights? Couldn't you have restrained yourself just this once? You know what I think? I'm not the least bit interested in what you think. Mike. I think you got shit-faced just to piss me off. Don't flatter yourself. I'm simply anesthetizing myself against tonight's barrage of congratulatory ass-licking. Anyway, what's the big deal? Everybody's whacked at these dudes. When they leave, not when they arrive. You're lucky I'm going. I can think of a lot better ways to spend my evening than watching you hit on every pert ass little bimbo that wanders within striking distance. Then why the hell are you going? Matrimonial duty, dear heart. A wife's place is at her husband's side at moments of great disappointment. You're a bitch, you know that? Oh, I see I've struck a raw nerve. Yeah, you strike a raw nerve every time you open your fucking mouth. Or could it be that you're pissed that I interrupted your afternoon aerobics with your nubile little cheerleader from next door? She came over to wish me luck. Right, and one good turn deserves another. I'm old enough to be the girl's father, for Christ's sake, Liz. Knowing you, dear, you probably are. Go fuck yourself. It's the only action I'm likely to get around here. Ain't that the truth? If I wanted to fool around with Susie Thompson, I'd hardly bring her back here, would I? I'm not that stupid!
thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. I mean, literally speechless. I, I was so sure I wouldn't win, I didn't write one. Write one. Mind you, saying that, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> now, you don't have to take my word for it. Ask my wife. On second thought... <laughs> Mom. Now, at this point, I'm supposed to bore you all witless, thanking everyone who's Mom. helping. Which dress do you want me to wear? The peach one or the yellow one? Whatever. Suit yourself. How about the blue one? Definitely not the blue one. You wore the blue one the last three years and I lost. It's a fucking kiss of death. Which one then? The peach or the yellow? The yellow. You want me to wear the yellow one? Yeah. You're absolutely positive? Yes! Suit yourself. I mean... Credit where credit's due. I mean, if someone's helped you, it's only right to thank them. However, saying that, tonight, I'm not naming a single name. Not because I don't want to, but because it's just not humanly possible. You see, the people responsible for me standing here tonight The winner of this prestigious award are you, the great American public who by faithfully tuning in week after week have made Caught in the Act this country's number one show. Thank you. Thought you'd appreciate it. After all, who needs luck when you're the marvelous Mike Mason? God, you're not trying to sober me up, are you? Just drink it. Any chance of lacing it with a drop of brandy? No, I thought not. We'll be sitting with Howard Zimmerman and his wife, so try not to do anything too embarrassing. Like engage them in intelligent conversation? No, like acting fucking superior. It's difficult not to with the Zimmermans. They're such incredible Philistines. Then again, I suppose that's an essential quality for someone producing such a moronic load of crap like Caught in the Act. You're so full of shit, you know that? What'd you ever do? You goddamn actress made a career out of fucking auditions. Now, I know gratitude has never been your strong suit, Liz, but you want to remember, if it wasn't for those Philistines and that moronic load of crap, as you so eloquently put it, I'd still be playing some shitty club, and we, my dear, would still be living in a roach-infested fifth-floor walk-up. So as long as you're paying my salary, and you're prepared to spend it, you'll treat them with respect! You understand? Good! Now drink that coffee and get yourself sober. I wouldn't want you throwing up all over the fucking plaza. It would be so unfucking chic I'm sorry, honey. Were you saying something? I'll bring the car around. And don't forget to take your heart tablets. And for your fucking information, I did not make a career out of auditions. I turned down work because of you. You what? Turned down work because your agent, Harry fucking Edison, was concerned I might ruin your family image. It was a porno. It was an art house film. Yeah, okay. It was. The actress that took over my role ended up working for Fellini. You mean Pirelli, tits and tires. That's about your level. Fucking bastard.
Yes. Look, whoever you are, will you please stop fucking around? I'm getting sick of this. Help me. Please, help me. Who is this? What do you want? Oh God, please, please. Why are you doing this? What do you want? For Christ's sake, who is this? Carol Mitchell. Who did you say? Who did you say? Hello? Hello? Knows, Mike. What? God, what are we gonna do? What are you babbling about? This woman phoned. She said she was home. Who? For Christ's sake, who? Carol Mitchell, she said she was Carol Mitchell. Don't start that again. What are we gonna do? I don't know what you're going to do. I'm going to New York and try and finally win an Emmy. But the phone call. Oh, come on. You don't expect me to believe that crap, do you? It happened. Oh, just when I happen to be waiting in the car. Very convenient. Like, I would lie about something like this. Crazy, you don't give up, do you? You're not going to ruin my night, you hear me? You're not going to fucking ruin my night. Now get in the car. Please, I know. I know it sounds a little She's dead, for Christ's sake, Liz. Carol Mitchell is dead. I know she's dead. But it means that somebody knows about us! Then why wait four years before doing anything? I mean, if someone knew, why wouldn't they go straight to the police? I know what I heard. Oh, just like last month, when you knew someone was stalking you. Well, you did. That's why I doled out 15 grand on fucking private detectives. That's it! Because you said there was a stalker. Like these affairs I'm supposedly having. Like standing in the fucking supermarket, screaming at Mary Chambers because I gave the woman a ride home from the station. Like suddenly this house has an oppressive feel about it. We've been living here for five years and now you're too frightened to be here on your own. You're fucking schizoid. All the bows you've been pouring down your throat has finally taken a fucking toll on you. You're out of your fucking mind. You're cracking up, Liz. I don't know what the hell they've been doing down at rehab for the past two years. It's a goddamn joke. You're worse now. You're worse now than when you started. And you can tell that precious Dr. Campbell. It's time they started getting results. Oh, God. Are these, are these your tablets, heart tablets? What? Have you taken them? Tell me to. I meant take them with you to the awards ceremony. Can't you read? Why are you not to be taken with alcohol? Why do you suppose they put that on a fucking bottle, huh? Could it possibly be that when you mix the two together, it sends you out of your fucking mind? Carol Mitchell, Jesus Christ, Carol Mitchell phone, Carol Mitchell phone. It's amazing you're not fucking out of the line. Fuck! What the fuck? Fuck. Liz, nobody can connect us with her death, okay? Nobody. Nobody. Now, please, let's just get in the car.
Berkshire Chronicles, Sheila Towers. <laughs> This is my favorite time of the year where I get to stand here and hand out awards to some of the hardest working actors and actresses in the business. You people make my day. I'm very lucky to be here and I really want to know who killed Jessica. I'll just be a minute. Jeff, I thought I told you not to call me. I need to talk to you, Sue. There's nothing to talk about. Goodbye. Please. Just give me a minute. <sighs> All right, but make it quick. I'm at an award ceremony. What? An award ceremony. The Emmys, I'm at the Emmys. <sighs> I just want to say if I've done something, tell me. We'll work it out. <sighs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Things are happening for me, okay? I'm about to be the co-host of my own TV show. <laughs> Can you give me my own TV show, huh? Can you? I don't think so. Someone else isn't there. You're spoiling my evening, Jeff. Who is it? None of your business. The fuck you mean it's none of my business? <coughs> Gotta go. And to our next category, Television Personality of the Year. And the nominees are from ABC's ever popular game show, Gold Rush, Wayne Dexter. <laughs> From New York Weekend's innovative news program, Eddie De Silva. <laughs> and our final nominee from Fox 5's perennial favorite, Caught in the Act, Mike Mason. Go for it, Mike Mason! <laughs> and the winner is. Win, win, and I'll fuck your brains out. Eddie De Silva. Petty De Silva. Test pattern's got more personality than that Weasley little prick. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You know like using this road. I'm tired. I want to get home. Man, you do not give an arrest on and fucking on for Christ's sake. Jesus. Oh, wait. What's that? Just look at it! Is there anything to see? Oh, how the hell should I know? I swear to God, I get my hands on these motherfuckers! I'll fucking kill him! I'll fucking kill him! Where the hell is the phone? Don't tell me these cocksuckers have fucking stolen it! Perfect end to a god awful night. It's really weird, Mike. They left the DVD player, the TV. Uh, what do you want me to do? Send him a thank you card? Turn the damn thing off! Lennox Police Station, can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to report a break-in. Can I have your name and address, please? 
Mason, Mike Mason, 120 Woodbridge Drive. Mike Mason? Not the Mike Mason of Caught in the Act. Yeah, that's the one. Thought I recognized the voice. I'm a big fan of yours, Mike. I watch your show every week. Never miss it. Great. Check the safe. What? The safe. Check the fucking safe. Bad luck about the award. Thank you. Saw it on TV. You were robbed. <sighs> Twice in one night. Look, do you think you could just send someone over? I'll get right on it, Mike. <laughs> What is it? What? Jesus Christ. wrong and they'll break in. What are we gonna do? Christ knows! Oh, okay, listen. I'll pretend I don't know what they're talking about, all right? I'll, I'll tell them the call was a hoax, all right? All right, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming.
you doing? I've just woken up. But we've just arrived home. I'm pretending, for Christ's sake. That's what I'm going to tell them. But the awards, they, they saw you on TV. They know that you just got home. Shit. All right, all right.
off Now's the time to stand up and shout Now's the time to fuss and drop out and do your own thing Dust off your old friend of guitar, put your in the sink Don't teach man, don't break Leave the gear by the car and I'll do that Don't take man, don't break man I'll never see things your way There's an art to packing I'll never see things your way What are you doing? I'll do all the packing here. Just leave things on the ground when you bring them out. Oh. We're only going away for two days, Sandy. Honey, everything in here is essential. Everything. Okay, young lady, don't be too long. Sister camping this weekend. It's like a madhouse over there. But I wanted to stop over and tell you how sorry I am about last night. Who told you? Nobody. I saw it on TV. Oh, the awards. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really not with it this morning. I thought you meant Liz. Liz? She had to be admitted to the Heathfield Clinic. You're kidding! No, she completely flipped. Started <gasps> blasting away with the fucking shotgun, threatened to kill herself, kill me. Jesus, when? Last night, after we got back. Didn't you hear anything? No. It was horrendous. Dr. Campbell, you know, from the clinic, had to sedate her to take her in. I mean, <laughs> think she's had a complete mental breakdown. I mean, we both know things haven't been great between us, but even so, with her heart and everything, I mean, something like this could... God, I don't even want to think about it. So you're on your own then? <laughs> um, yeah. So, what do you want me to be? Choice is yours. Uh, please don't think I'm trying to get rid of you or anything. <laughs> Why are you whispering? Force of habit. <laughs> you want me to leave? I've got all of these things to sort out. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> sure. I'll just give Jeff a call. He's always up for a good fuck. The joke, Mike. <laughs> like, once I've seen Liz, I'll give you a call. Aren't you forgetting something? 
Oh, sorry, honey. No. Howard Zimmerman, what did he say? About what? What the fuck do you think? My idea for the show. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't get a chance to. You promised. I know, and I will. Don't, and you'll regret it. Catch you later. Who was that, Michael? Oh, it was the kid from next door. She came over to commiserate about the Emmys. Sounded very friendly. Oh, she's a complete pain in the ass. I made a pass at her, stressed Liz out. Now the stupid kid won't leave me alone. I was worried you were gonna come down. No, oh, I'd hardly do that. God, you look terrible. Probably because that's how I feel. I'm gonna make something to eat. Do you want anything? No, none for me, thanks, oh. Julie. No, I told her about Liz, said she'd gotten violent and had to be admitted to the clinic. Good. I was really convincing. Are you sure you can't come with us? I'd love to, Mom, but I've got so much studying to do. We'll be home Tuesday. If you need anything, you can contact us on the cell phone. Okay. There's plenty of food in the fridge, and we've left the credit card on the desk in case of an emergency. I'll be fine, Mom. And don't be too late getting to bed, young lady. I will be. I promise. Could it? After last night, very easily. You're positive no one saw you coming out of her room. Even if they did, I'd have every right to be there. Well, this isn't how we planned it, Julie. But the result's the same. <sighs> the results would have been the same if we blew our fucking brains out. Stop worrying. We spent months going over every detail, you know, the, the planning, the preparation, the performance. Changing things at the spur of the moment. I have mistakes from me. What was I supposed to do? Let her regain consciousness? You said the shock would kill her. Well, you did. You said the condition her heart was in was absolutely no way it would bring on a heart attack. Which it did. But it didn't kill her. What's this a fucking heart attack? It's not fucking fatal. <sighs> Why don't they call? Mrs. Mason? Mrs. Mason? Mrs. Mason? Oh, man, God. I hope we've done the right thing. We had no alternative. If you tried to divorce her, she would have gone straight to the police and told them about Carol Mitchell. She would have, Michael. Just to spite you, even if it meant incriminating herself. Would she? Oh, come on, Michael. She was an alcoholic. When she was drunk, she had no idea what she was saying. She didn't even remember telling me about the accident. It was just a matter of time before she blurted it out to somebody else. Anyway... Whether or not we should have killed her is academic. We did. It's done. Trust.
trust me. Everything's Christ. It's that girl. Get rid of her. Mike. I have a question for you. Have you eaten? What? Breakfast, silly. You haven't, right? Uh, I'm not hungry. Oh, you gotta keep your strength up. I can't have my co-host flaking out on me, now can I? So how do you like your eggs? Over easy? There's a loose wire under here. So, wait a minute. You know what you need? Breakfast in bed. Yeah, I told you I'm not hungry. I am. For Christ's sakes, my wife just been admitted to the hospital with a nervous breakdown. Yeah, so? Yeah, so. I hardly think it's the time to start leaping into bed, don't you? Oh, I see. It's okay to screw me when your wife's attending the clinic, but not when she's actually in it. I don't need to justify myself to you. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Now, if you don't mind... New fetish, Mike? What? Lipstick. What the hell are you talking about? Lipstick on the mug! All this shit about being concerned for Liz and you're just trying to get rid of me so you can screw your latest piece of ass! Don't be ridiculous! Who is she, Mike? The cleaning lady. It must be Liz's from last night! Bullshit! Still warm! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Don't be shy! Come join the party! Oh, maybe we can have a threesome! Another of your little quirks, Mike? What? Cross-dressing? It belongs to Liz. Oh, size six? I don't think so. I told you there's no one here. And even if there was, it'd be none of your fucking business. I think the past few months have made it my fucking business. Oh, get real, man. You were screwing me to get on TV. You were opening your life so I'd open some doors. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to be on my own. Which, for those that are slow in the uptake, that means fuck off. Fucking asshole! You never had any Welcome to showbiz, kid! Well, you better start watching the newspapers, Grandpa. There's gonna be some interesting features coming up. Mike Mason, caught in the act with a media student half his age. Just get out! Oh, all my torrid sex games with middle-aged perv kinky Mike. The tabloids will love it. Fine, fine. You want to be the next Monica Lewinsky? Be my guest. I'll supply the cigars. I'll even light it for you, sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Very cute. I've got one for you. You're not even good at it. Well, while well, you're in, you shouldn't be in a position to make comparisons. Fuck you. I hope your dick shrivels up and falls off. Prick. We're in trouble, Julie. Big trouble. That little bitch is going to the press. So I heard. Man, it'll be spread all over the tabloids, man. We'll have the top of fucking Rotsy camped out on the front lawn. Jesus Christ, what the hell are we going to do? Calm down. Calm down? It's all going wrong. Everything. Everything. I must have been crazy. Out of our fucking minds. I'm telling you, it's over. We're not getting away with it. Michael, stop shouting and tell me what happened. Right. She stepped on the pads off the music, right? She saw your lipstick on the mug. She found your jacket up the fucking bedroom. So why should she connect that with Liz dying of a heart attack? It's not going to happen, Michael. And as for the press, trust me, that little bimbo is not going to join the papers. I know her kind. She's all talk. Baby, but she's not stupid. She knew there was a woman in here. What if she connects it with the phone call? What phone call? She was here when you called. When? Yesterday, when you called about Liz. Did you mention my name? This is all turned into a fucking nightmare. Michael, did you mention my name? Yes, yes. I said you were my agent. So what's the problem? She knows my agent. She's met him. His name is Harry. All right, so you mentioned my name. The likelihood of her remembering it is so remote. 
It's the clinic. Hello? Dr. Campbell, this is Helen. I'm afraid Mrs. Mason's died. Died? When? Sometime during the night. We followed your instructions not to wake her till after morning round, so we can't be sure of the exact time. Has the cause of death been established? Dr. Gilbert's certain it was a heart attack. I see. All right. I'll be in a little later. In the meantime, could you break the news to Mr. Mason and tell him I'll stop by on my way to the clinic? He'll probably need a sedative. Certainly. Thanks, Helen. You are now unofficially a widower. And there won't be an autopsy? Even if there was, it would look like a heart attack. I told you, air injected into the vein is undetectable. Hello? May I speak with Mr. Mason, please? Speaking? Mr. Mason, this is the Heathfield Clinic. I'm sorry. I have some bad news concerning your wife. Liz? What happened? I'm sorry to have to tell you Mrs. Mason passed away during the night. She suffered a fatal oh, heart no. attack. If it's any comfort, she would have felt no pain. Oh, my God. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Mason. Please accept our condolences. So, what happens now? Should I come in? Oh, that would be much appreciated. Obviously, there are certain details we need to discuss. Would it be possible to stop by the clinic tomorrow, say, around 3 o'clock? Yeah, of course. Oh, and Dr. Campbell asked me to tell you she'll be dropping by sometime this morning. Once again, please accept our deepest sympathy. Mike? May I speak with Sue Thompson, please? Speaking. This is Dr. Campbell from the Heatfield Clinic. I'm with Mr. Mason, and I wonder if it's possible for you to come over and have a word with him. Why can't he talk to me on the phone? I'm afraid that's not possible at the moment. Yeah? Well, screw him! Yes? I think you screwing him has a lot to do with his current problems, Susan. Look. I can't discuss it on the phone, but I assure you, I wouldn't ask you to come over if I didn't think it was important. Please. Okay, fine. Whatever.
Who's this? I left you a little present. What? A present, Mike. A little surprise. What the hell are you talking about? Who, who, who is this? It's on the chair in the pool room, Mike. A goodbye present. Is that you, Sue? It, it is, isn't it? For Christ's sakes, it's, you know, it's the middle of the night. Hope you enjoy it, Mike. Hello? Hello? Is that you, Sue? If it is, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about this morning. Look, stop fucking around, okay? Sue? Sue, this isn't funny, all right? I'm not in the mood for games. I'm afraid your wife suffered a bit of heart attack, Mr. Mason. If it's any comfort, she would have felt no pain. Unlike you, my precious.
a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Being checked every two hours by your dedicated Dr. Campbell. <sighs> There's a change of clothes in the closet underneath the stairs. Get cleaned up. Well, come on! Gotta get you back to the clinic before you missed. <laughs> Sit in the chair. She was dead. Yeah. It was dark, and you thought she was dead. Yes. Tell the yes. truth, you lying bitch! Yes. What do you mean? Tell the truth! Oh. That afternoon when you came to the clinic, what did you tell me? Huh? Well, come on, this is <gasps> waiting. What did you tell me? What did you tell me? I don't remember. <laughs> no, of course you don't. You were so drunk the next day, you don't even remember being there. Well, that afternoon, you told me everything. Every last detail. You didn't think for one minute Carol was dead. She was alive when you went back. No. Liar! She asked for your help and you walked away. Oh, left her lying there, crying, begging for help. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, God, please. No. Oh, please, no. How does it feel, Elizabeth? How does it feel to be totally helpless? It was three hours before they found her. Three hours lying there, unable to move, waiting to die. Please don't. Please don't. It's all I take, Elizabeth. I record all my sessions. Do you want to hear it? Begging for your help? Those are your words, Elizabeth, not mine. Where we're on our way home. Emmys. My Mr. Irish. He been drinking. Even though it had one big great Oh. <laughs> it would have been great if I won. Oh, um, don't worry, honey. I'll give you your award when we get home. Well, in that case... Fuck it! Oh my god, honey, we hit somebody. We hit... We... We... Don't go! She's 
didn't you phone and let somebody know where she was? You didn't have to give your name. I couldn't. That's all it would have taken. One telephone call and Carol would still be alive. Or she might have recognized me. So you left her to die? Mike was drunk. We'd have lost everything. Seventeen years old, with her whole life ahead of her, and you left her to die? The hospital said if we had her there an hour earlier, they could have saved her. Did you know that? One hour, and Carol would still be alive. Michael may have run her down, but you killed her, Elizabeth. When you walked away, you murdered her as surely as if you put the gun to her head and pulled the trigger. Well, Michael received his just desserts. And now it's your turn. This is Dr. Campbell at Heathfield Clinic. 
One of my patients, a Mrs. Elizabeth Mason, has gone missing. But she's been making violent threats against her husband and a number of young women. In my opinion, it could be dangerous. I've tried phoning, but I can't get through to Mr. Mason. Could you send someone over to make sure everything's all right? The address is 120 Woodbridge Drive. Okay, doctor. I'll send someone as soon as I can. If you could call me with an update, I'd appreciate it. My number is 413-441-9383. Well, I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything.